Hey, this is Corey Wong with Info Music. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Corey Wong. Hello. How are you doing? Great, thank you. Um, I understand this is your first time in Poland. I was Googling around, but you haven't performed before, right? Unfortunately, this is my first time here. I have enjoyed it very much so far. It will not be the last time I'm back. But I'll keep your word for that. All right. But last time, I mean a year ago, we had Cody Fry on Jazz Around First Edition. We had um, Theo Katzman, with whom you performed Wolfpack, for example, right? We had Dirty Loops, with whom you recorded records, yeah. right? And how come you didn't be here last year? I think you have to ask the festival that question, not me. <laughs> probably the, the, answer, the answer probably is very simple. You weren't around, right? But this year you are. I don't remember when it was, but um, I do remember all of my friends going and me feeling a little slice of envy for that. And also Cody had my good friend Rob Harris from the band Jamiroquai playing guitar with him. So I, I definitely wanted to be here. I don't remember why I wasn't here. But I'm here now and I'm excited to be here now. Yeah, that's great. Um, you have uh, cooperated with very many artists and I'm, I've been following your Instagram and mm -hmm. YouTube. A channel and recently I've seen you with Nile Rogers who is let's agree about that that's a legend right yes. could you spill a little beans about that with Nile Rogers yeah Niall is an amazing person and has become a friend he's somebody that I've been a fan of since I was a kid I mean I've listened to so many hit songs that he's written played recorded produced whatever um, so even on that side of it alone but as a guitar player i've been such a fan of his because he's one of the few people who's really put a lot of emphasis on rhythm guitar and kind of made it the thing that he's known for and as, as somebody who's a consummate rhythm guitar player you know that's something that i really shine in and uh, we have a kindred spirit in that kindred spirit in that and um a couple years, or maybe a year ago, I interviewed Niall for my podcast, Wong Notes Podcast. And, you know, we got to talking and it was great. And he was, I could tell he was a little bit familiar with my music and that sort of thing. But then maybe a month and a half ago, I got a text message from an unknown number that just said, Corey, this is Niall Rogers. I need you to call me right now. <laughs> I was like, okay, if Niall texts me, if this really is Niall, I can't, I mean, it, this could be anybody, but I'm, it's probably Niall. Uh, I'm in a calm. So I called him and he said, oh my gosh, I just got done watching a bunch of your YouTube videos and listening to your albums. I love what you do. You're amazing, blah, blah, blah. He said all these really nice things and I was flattered and my heart was pounding because he's been such a hero of mine. And he said, we got to start doing some stuff together. Fly out to Miami, fly out to New York, whatever. Let's, let's do some stuff together. And um, we've been trying to make that work on the schedule for a long time. It hasn't really worked out. And uh, we ended up having some Co-Bill concerts together. And, you know, we're hanging out at the hotels and just talking. And um, we did some jamming together. And I, we played together at, on stage in France. And now are kind of trying to coordinate when to work out some writing and recording together. <laughs> Question, it's not really about gear, but uh, maybe a little bit, but sure. as far as I understand, you started as a bass player. That was your first instrument, right? Do you think that starting as a bass player affects your the way you sound and the way you perform on guitar, on strat? Mm. I think in some ways it probably does. If A lot of times when I watch people play my songs, and try to do the Corey Wong thing. It's funny. 
I hear people refer to it as that, you know, and it is, I, I know I have a sound. I know I have a unique way of playing the guitar. When I hear people do the Corey Wong thing on guitar, there are certain elements that I find that are missing and some of it is in the attack and the way that I attack my downstrokes and upstrokes in the funk playing. And I think I attack in the way that I attack when I'm playing slap bass. So I play a lot of slap bass. You push through the string, you pop and pull it up. And when I play guitar with my funk style, I hold the pick kind of backwards from what's proper technique. So because of that, I kind of pick down through the string and pull back up. So it has a different kind of snap to it. And I'm not saying that I have good technique because really I should have proper technique where the pick goes down this way, but instead I have a reverse angle grip. Um, that being said, I'm in good company. George Benson, Pat Metheny, Isaiah Sharkey. There's a handful of people that also play reverse grip, so I'm not gonna stress about it. But so with reverse grip, there's a certain attack through the strings and a certain way that I pull back up that I was listening for that in the way that I've been playing and, and when I was trying to find a sound. And I think a lot of it came from the physics of slap bass, just understanding how the string pops and slaps and kind of gives it a unique thing. But also I think my attention to groove from, from playing the bass informed a lot of the way that I play on guitar too. You know, as a bass player, it's so important. You have to really, when you release the notes is so critical because it kind of lets the groove breathe in a certain way. You know, really good bass players, you know, we focus on the attack of the note, but also when the note lifts to kind of help the groove breathe and give it a certain type of pocket. I think a lot of guitar players don't have to think that deep about the releases. You don't have to be as precise with the releases, but I am trained to be, so I am. You said that you have this signature sound and that's, that's something that I can't disagree sure. about, right? But um, when I was uh, checking out your gear, because I thought that you have this sound that I don't remember who, but someone referred to your sound as hardcore funk, which I personally <laughs> loved because it sounds so strong, you know, it's, it's not a mellow guitar, but it's very much in front, right? Yeah. And uh, I thought that probably you might use some, I don't know, 12 gauge strings, mm. but it appears that it's a 1046, right? Yeah. So I use straight up Ernie Ball strings, slinkies. Sometimes I use the paradigms. I've been messing around with the M steels also, but they're all just tens. You're right. I have kind of a hardcore clean tone. It, a lot of it's the attack. So much of it is the attack. That's what goes into it. But every step of the chain plays a role into that. So the strings themselves, yes, I use tens. They're they they take a beating, but they're good for it. <laughs> like these are you know um, the. The pickups I use in my guitar, I developed with Seymour Duncan to be, they're called the clean machine pickups. You know, they're, they're meant to be these really snappy, beautiful, chimey, clean, round top end though, but still like a, be able to have a girthy bottom. Um, and the guitar I play is one that I designed with Fender. It's my Corey Wong signature Stratocaster that was made to have um, a certain, type of pop to it and I run into a compressor which I developed with Wampler the Wong compressor and I think that's if anything that's maybe one of the more key ingredients than others I mean the the strat the pickups and the the compressor I would say are the main ingredients then where you go from there I'm kind of open to whatever I'll, I'll sometimes record DI into a console I'll sometimes record just straight into my Apollo uh, twin or whatever at home. Uh, I My favorite tone to record into is the Neural DSP Archetype Corey Wong plugin, mm -hmm. which I developed with them. So again, every step of the way, it's these things that I've catered to make a sound, but also be able to be really widespread because not every time do I get hired get to play guitar, do I get hired to be Corey Wong. Sometimes I'll get hired to play on 
somebody else's record and they just want really good sounding guitar. So all my gear is made, catered to sound just like me, but be versatile enough to be very much. Do you want the John Mayer thing? I'll give you that. Do you want just big open chords? I'll give you that. Do you want the, you know, whatever, the, the Frashanti thing? I can do that with it. The, the Nile thing. There, there's so many different uh, approaches that can be used when you when you have the right gear, but compressor is a big one. Um, but then also, a lot of guitar players are afraid to turn the reverb off, mm -hmm. and I play with no reverb. The talent. Well, <laughs> you know, it's it's I play really clean, and with the type of attack and the the type of uh, transient, the, just that sort of attack thing that I'm looking for, it can't be kind of washed over by reverb unless it's uh, for effect like sometimes in solos and things like that i use reverb but when it comes to hard hitting attack no reverb on it yeah <laughs> All right, let's skip the grip one question about uh, you know the, the pandemic times it's for many musicians it, it was a nightmare right a, a lot of careers just broke but you you kind of uh, you were so prolific you recorded so many records you did so much stuff during the pandemic and the question that I wanted to ask you is do you have any piece of advice for musicians how to stay creative how not to lose it Yes. My main thing is, it sometimes sounds harsh, but in in today's day and age, my thought is, if you're not inspired, you're not paying attention. There is so much inspiring stuff happening in the world right now. There's a lot of terrible things, of course, but there is so much incredible music being played. We have the entire history of recorded music at our fingertips. We have recordings of Bill Evans from the 1960s on YouTube. We have recordings of Brad Meldow from 10 years ago. We have, you know, Paramore's concert from last week on there. There's a, whatever genre or whatever decade, there's so much available to us just to absorb. And we have amazing art museums where you can go and absorb visual art. You, there's so many great films that are out there right now that you can watch pretty much anywhere, you know, with if you have a, a internet connection. And also just go outside. I think a lot of people don't find inspiration because they're constantly scrolling the same three apps and the algorithms feeding the same sort of thing. And there's not much depth to it. And you're you're absorbing these things where it's it's inherently meant to keep your attention for a little bit, and then move you to the next thing that will keep your attention for a little bit. And I think to find any sense of creative de creative depth, you have to spend time paying attention. You have to spend time absorbing things, taking a look at a Monet and saying, "Wow, there's." There's not a lot of definition in this one, but the tone color is this way, as opposed to when he painted this one, there's more definition and there's different tone color and it hits me differently. Wow, I wonder if that's the one, like this painting looks to me like it has reverb and delay on it and this one looks to me like it's through clean amp, you know? So if you can make those comparisons, if you can kind of draw certain inspiration from other forms of art, that really helps your creativity, but I have also always thought that creativity is a flower that blossoms or a vine that blossoms and not a gas tank that empties. Some people look at their creativity or they look at the things that they, their creative output as, I've only got this finite amount of it because that's all they can feel right now. It's all that they know. And they're afraid to let it all out where I think okay, like, yes, my creativity has only gone this far. Like, my vine has only grown to this halfway up the door, but I'm, I want to make it to the top of the building. And when I surround myself with other vines and intertwine with other vines, that sort of thing is 
what really helps me continue to grow in my creativity and being around more creative people uh, really helps a lot. Thank you so much. Of course. I really do believe that today your concert is going to be inspiring for us. And one last question, just find one word to define what is going to happen today during your concert. One word. Fun. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Corey Wong. Thank you. Yeah.